Hello, everyone. Uh, welcome again to our virtual Farm Futures Business Summit. I'm Mike Wilson, the executive editor of Farm Futures, and I'm glad to be uh, having a nice uh, interview today with our Farm Futures policy editor, Jackie Fatka. She has been, uh, she's an Iowa girl. She's now a farm girl, in fact, and she now lives with her family in Ohio on a farm. And she's been a policy editor for us since we uh, relaunched the magazine back in 2003 or so. And so Jackie has been, uh, Jackie will be at uh, the, set, the summit in June. And we um, want to talk to her a little bit today about some of the things that have been happening on uh, Capitol Hill. She's been very busy writing a lot of stories in her award-winning DC Dialogue blog, which you can find at farmfuture.com. And uh, quite a bit has happened since the administration uh, changed hands. Jackie, why don't you tell us a little bit about what's what's been going on? Well, policy is always interesting, um, even more so in a election um, coming off a, a somewhat controversial uh, election, but also a very close election. So I think uh, w within any new administration, there's always a lot of looking at the first 100 days. And so we are actually kind of approaching that 100 days right now. And uh, obviously a lot of proposals on the table. Uh, there is a, a very close Senate with a 50-50 split. And also in the House, we, we don't have a, a large margin. And so I think everybody came into this year really hoping that there would be a lot of bipartisanship uh, just because of those close margins. Uh, what we're actually seeing is the Democrats using the reconciliation process, which doesn't really require some of the bipartisanship that would normally be seen in the Senate to advance, uh, first off, the, the large COVID relief package in the first part of the year, first part of the administration that actually, um, we're hearing a lot about trillions, trillions of money. And so the American Rescue Plan plan was uh, $1.9 trillion. And then now we've had in the last couple of weeks, uh, more proposals out of this administration and Congress is beginning to try to formulate the American job plan and the American uh, families plan. So uh, the job plan is also known somewhat as an infrastructure bill, but some climate money in there. Uh, and then also within the families plan is the tax proposals that a lot of farmers are probably hearing a lot about. So a lot of uh, things flying around. We don't really have a solid proposal from Congress. We're just hearing some reaction to what the broader policy proposals are from the Biden administration with their jobs plan, quote jobs plan, and their, which would be infrastructure, climate, and then the the families plan, which would also include some of the capital gains, taxes, changes, stepped up basis, and how that how that all impacts farmers is is going to be interesting, and and we're seeing a little bit of that starting to play out. Jackie, uh, I know you've interviewed Roger McCown, who's also going to be at the summit. He is a tax expert, um, and you've written quite a lot about. Uh, some of the fears, I guess you could say, I've written a little bit too, some of the fears that farmers have about this tax change of capital gains, a stepped up basis. Roger said the other day to me that he was a little disappointed because USDA had put out a some kind of flyer that kind of implied that farmers shouldn't worry about this, but he didn't think that was really accurate. Do you think farmers need to worry about uh, changes and stepped up basis and capital gains. Is that really going to happen? What's your opinion about that? So, so I, I love Roger. Great resource. I think I actually forwarded him that USDA release and it said only 2% of farmers were going to be impacted. And I said, how can this even be? And, uh, and, and his response was, yeah, no way. Um, you know, we're hearing more and more about the implications of this. And, um, you know, the the proposal right now as it stands is that if it was passed on to an heir or a family member, that is an heir that is a family member, that farmers wouldn't be impacted. But we also know that lower lower uh, levels of um, your estate tax would really start to impact farmers. When you look at the average um, stepped up basis, I, I it is it is $560 on an acre if I'm, um, if I, 
if I'm remembering correctly, but we're talking more than what some people are even paying for rent on some of this ground if the stepped up basis is allowed to 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 impact. And and when we're looking at um, you know, so much of our land is going to change hands probably here in the next couple of decades. Uh, you mentioned I'm an Iowa uh, farm girl. My dad farms in Southwest Iowa, so I love to to talk with him. And um, you know, there's been a lot of farms that have come up for sale over the last couple of years, and so he is trying to build a an operation that can. Um, also blend in my brother who is also farming. There's a lot of farms who may not maybe in the market to buy. Um, and so that stepped up basis is is impacting them too when it comes to to how they would plan going forward. And so you know it's 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 not just um, I think there is a lot of right, <laughs> there is a lot of hesitancy on how this would impact farmers and rightfully so, because if it's done wrong, then it will have a really negative impact. And unfortunately, there is uh, some House Democrats, Democrats from rural districts who are are making sure that that is known, that those implications and the, the negative impact when it comes to stepped up basis um, you know, but whatever you have, you know, you've got winners and losers that are being chosen. And so how they write this matters and how the farm exclusion is in there matters. And, you know, how the stepped up basis is huge and it's an accounting nightmare if they don't figure it out. And I, you know, I love to go to, to Roger for that because he, he knows the tax world way much, way more than I do. The, the overall big problem, I think, with reconciliation, and that's what the avenue is on this, is sometimes we don't get a good debate. And so we're hearing a lot of these concerns. And at the end of the day, we want to make sure that farmers' voice and how this would impact them is being heard by those on Capitol Hill. Because if a reconciliation bill that I kind of call a kitchen sink of everything thrown in there and and not really allowed for open debate or open discussion, even within the committees, then then we could start to see some things that are troubling and we have no opportunity to really change change it for for the good. And so that's, I think, one of the most troubling things about the process that we're seeing on the political spectrum this year is all of this kitchen sink approach to so many issues that do have some bipartisan support. We have a bill that actually would repeal the death tax that has bipartisan support in the House. There is a Democrat co-sponsor. So if we could see more of that, great. But would that be able to make it into a big reconciliation bill? Probably not. But and, and so we're, you know, there's there's good ideas that don't get a good platform to be discussed when we see it all lumped together in reconciliation. Well, that's a lot. I you asked for my crystal ball and I didn't really give you the crystal ball because a policy is so hard to yeah. have a crystal ball. I think we can all hope that there is enough noise right now that farmers would be excluded, but I think it's still going to find ways that would negatively impact them, especially if we see this done in a fashion that is not friendly to small businesses, which a lot of farm operations also have, you know, side small businesses, as well as just the the high, you know, farmland itself creates such a high level of money that sometimes comes at the end with what however many acres are in a person's hands when they die. Um. I, I, want, I was just going to ask you, it's a, it feels like with prices where they are and people out in the field enjoying planting season, this is maybe not on their radar. Uh, you got to assume that it's on the radar for the lobbyists, the farm lobby in, in D.C., especially Farm Bureau and other groups like that, who've always been very effective in getting their message across. What are the other hot issues you think that farmers need to be thinking about this in, this year and from coming out of Capitol Hill? So, you know, every five years we have a farm bill. It's not a farm bill year. Uh, the farm bill will actually come up for reauthorization in 2023. Uh, but this year, I think, because we're in kind of this 
spending. Uh, it doesn't really matter how much we spend. I mean, we've already spent, I, I just can't get over the fact that we're talking about trillions. Um, but the first COVID package passed in 2021 was 1.9 trillion. We passed nearly 4 trillion last year. And then we're looking at, I don't know, another couple trillion, three, four more trillion later this year if we see these other two packages, the jobs plan and the families plan. That being said, there's a lot of work going on to establish the farm bill baseline, which a lot of times dictates what kind of policy we can have because the policy can't spend more than what the baseline is. And so there is hope that they're going to be able to build in some conservation funding in the baseline and through some of this reconciliation or appropriations that would establish a higher amount for that come 2023. And we've heard Secretary Vilsack say a lot that he is wanting to, to, to see some pilot projects and basically walk before you run when it comes to the payments that farmers would be receiving for climate mitigation actions. And so I really anticipate that we're gonna see more money, whether that is an expanded conservation security program, we've already seen USDA try to uh, increase enrollment in the conservation reserve program by attaching some incentives for climate actions on this land because we're actually under enrolled in CRP from what Farm Bill did. And so I have heard more than once that the conservation funding fight is going on pretty intensely right now. And so they are really working to establish the baseline. So when the farm bill does come, there will be more money. That being said, there will also be some money right away. So if you, uh, there is some place marker uh, in the, the, the proposal, the infrastructure proposal from President Biden, but not a lot of meat on that. And so I really think that we could see some work to, like I said, expand conservation programs that are already there. I don't think they're going to try to reinvent the wheel. I think they're just going to try to expand it and also provide some more technical assistance. So more money for NRCS to come out and help make those conservation plans and help farmers understand what is actually happening uh, on their farm, what they can apply for. You know, a big thing on this climate space, uh, there's a lot of talk about a carbon bank and USDA's role within that, whether that takes money. Uh, obviously, it, there's a lot of reluctant uh, Republicans, especially in the Senate, on using USDA funds, like we saw with the trade mitigation payments, to pay farmers for things. And so, you know, the, those are all things that will be up for debate this year. And what kind of debate we'll see really will be dictated by how much cooperation and bipartisanship. If we start to see, you know, and back to the tax issue, if we see some Senate Democrats start to part ways on this, all of a sudden we don't have the ability to just flatline here's our big, huge package. We're going to, we're going to pass it no matter what, which is kind of what we saw with that COVID relief package. So, Here's hoping we have some bipartisanship. I think everybody benefits when we have bipartisanship. I try to say that I'm a, I don't know, I'm a farmer's daughter. So am I an optimist or do I just see everything a little wondering what kind of rain's coming next? Um, so I think everybody wants to, to see more bipartisanship. Uh, Joe Biden spent 40 years in the Senate operating as a bipartisan member of that chamber. And so I think I, I really hope everybody can start to see more of that. We did see some uh, members from the, both leaders from both sides. Um, uh, we're starting to see more White House meetings with Republicans and Democrats. And so as we head into the summer months, hopefully we will see more of that cooperation between the two. Well, Jackie, I know we've just skimmed the surface here and we're going to have to, uh, we're going to have to close it down, but there's uh, so many other topics. I'm, I'm sure you'll be touching on many of them at the summit. Uh, climate, carbon, uh, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. But uh, we do appreciate your time today. We appreciate your expertise. I, I feel like we need to clone you. You've got so many great ideas and stories that you're writing. And make sure everyone to go see Jackie's work at DC Dialogue at farmfutures.com. Uh, she's an expert at policy and writing about policy. And we're very, very lucky to have her on our staff. 
And that's it from us. Uh, this has been Mike Wilson, Farm Futures Executive Editor. And uh, thank you very, thank you all for joining us. Thank you.